Yeah, well, initially we looked at just straight costs to the taxpayer. Um, where, where, where were those cost centres? A lot of duplication because we had a number of these agencies across the province. And we said, well, how do we bring them together? Then, then when we started interacting uh, with our international partners, we pulled in some international consultants, had a look at best practice around the world, um, looked through the OECD countries, and uh, we, it kind of evolved from an agency to a partnership where we actually need to bring the economy together. Before we get to delivery agencies, what about the economy? The economy is so divided and all over the place. We've got those in the economy and those out the economy. We've got those in the big economy and those in the informal economy, some above the radar, some below the radar. So we had to see how do we bring that economy together. So it evolved into a partnership. We've now got 115 organizations who are members now of the partnership. And today, uh, an exciting day, we uh, got to announce a board and it was a board not a board sort of by government for government it was a board that was independent of government so we I set up the, the part of the steering committee but we gave uh, a, a selection committee absolute independence to select a board that would bring all of these partners and role players together outside of politics it's about the economy it's about making a difference in the economy so yeah it's an exciting day over the past three years, the Western Cape has attracted just more than 30 billion rand in investment. What industries are being targeted and where are we seeing this investment coming from? Okay, we, I mean, we target various sectors. I mean, we really are focusing very hard at the moment on oil and gas. Uh, we're looking at the green economy. I think a, su a success sector is the BPO space. A lot of companies setting up call centers, back office processing. Uh, we've got about 33,000 jobs now in the, in the BPO sector. Um, Tourism is obviously big, so we've got a number of sectors that we focus on. Um, when it comes to foreign direct investment, I mean, we're open for business. We, we, we will, we will uh, you know, look for anybody who wants to invest here. We'll, we'll offer them a great platform, a place that government works, a place where government will give them the services they need so they can come and do what they do, which is grow the economy and, and, and build jobs. Can you give us an idea of FDI trends going forward? And can we expect to see more investments coming from the developing world? Well, well I mean, that's our focus. We, we've, been too, we've been too stuck on core markets. Um, so we know that our export products go predominantly to Europe, the UK and a bit to the US. Um, now we need to change that because we're not seeing growth coming out of the, uh, the EU countries. So we've got to move into the other BRIC countries specifically. So we will be diversifying um, all of our markets, whether, it, whether it's selling our products um, or whether it's attracting tourists and investment. And then of course we are having a major focus on Africa. Um, you know, I think for too long we've looked, you know, to those core markets and, ex and ignored the emerging world and specifically ignored Africa. And since, you know, for the last two years, two and a half years, we've been focusing on cha our change of our attitude to Africa, how we see Africa, and we're seeing growth, phenomenal growth coming out of Africa. And, uh, you know, at the moment now, um, I think it's gone to 25% of our agricultural exports are now going into Africa. So we are diversifying uh, and quickly. We know that the Western Cape has been outperforming the rest of the country in terms of economic growth, but there has been criticism of jobless growth. Now, is this the case or is this just due to the nature of seasonal employment in the agricultural sector? I mean, we're seeing a 3.1% uh, GDP growth at the moment, coming up from a, from a negative during the, down, you know, during the, uh, the global downturn. Um, and seeing slightly higher, you know, national being downgraded to 2.5%, we're sitting at 31 and projected still to continue at that and grow slightly. Um, we do have, we do lose jobs uh, because of the seasonality of our industry, um, seasonality in agriculture, seasonality in tourism, and our job is to try and break that seasonality, so we try and extend our seasons through tourism uh, promotion, etc., etc. But it is a major problem. But even though we have seasonalities, we still have seen in the last quarter 5,000 new jobs created. Um, you know, we've lost some in the agriculture, but 5,000 overall creation of new jobs, which is, is good. For, you know, I'm, I'm excited about that. But we've also got to change the way we do business and the, the model of our economy. So, you know, in the last 10 years, we've seen about 45% growth in the economy uh, over a 10-year period, but we've only seen about a 16% growth in jobs. So, you know, we're not seeing a, a direct correlation, and th but that's the nature of the new way things grow. But that's the task that we're going to give to the EDP, to say what are the sectors we need to focus on that actually start putting people into jobs. That's our core job now at the moment, is getting people to work. How, how do we get people to, to work? The green economy has been highlighted for job creation, but what sectors within the green economy are being targeted? 
I think uh, there's a few. I mean, one is obviously this, uh, the process of attracting, um, you know, both local and international in our, in our uh, RP process where we're looking at the supply of sustainable energy. So that's wind, solar primarily. Um, so we're looking at, at companies that are producing for those companies. Uh, we've got a blade manufacturer setting up. We're busy talking to a second blade manufacturer um, to make wind turbine blades. Um, we've got companies investing, like yesterday I visited an AEG factory, they've invested here because they see a role that can be played in, uh, in producing the electrical equipment that actually converts um, that electricity uh, from, from the solar PVs to all, all the wind generators into uh, putting it into the grid. They're seeing that opportunity, they've invested. Right down to companies that are manufacturing LED you know, light bulbs and, and the like. So there, there, there's a vast side of the green economy and I haven't even touched on, you know, dealing with waste and, you know, the, the green economy is pretty big and, and it, it, is, it, is, it is the future. Let's touch on some of the figures there. You said that by 2020 you expect the industry itself to grow by about 500% and employ about 16,000 people. Grow 500% in job, in job numbers. Um, at the moment we, we are seeing, you know, there's, it's off a low base, about 3,000 jobs in that space. Um, we're seeing that uh, you know, in the next, by 2025, you know, really growing in excess of 20,000 jobs. What kind of budget does the EDP have access to and how will it be financed going forward? Okay, the initial startup is coming from provincial government. We've also asked city to put some money into it. So we initially funded this process, um, the study and uh, the evolution to what we've got now. And now we will continue. We've already committed now for the next three years. Uh, we'll be putting five million a year thus far for the, for the EDP. Um, but National Treasury have also uh, seen some benefit in this and they've also contributed some money and uh, we're now asking some of the municipalities whether they'd be interested in putting some money into this program. And then the other partners, you know, their, 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 their range of partners and uh, a partnership means that partners come to the table um, and look at what they can bring to the table in this, in, from funding or from whatever other resource that they can, they can bring into the partnership. South Africa's costly stadiums. Now we know this issue is not unique to the Western Cape, but how is it going in terms of rezoning Greenpoint Stadium to include commercial activity? Okay, well obviously I don't have uh, you know line function to rezoning, but uh, you know looking relooking at the commercial space is key to making it a viable proposition. Um, obviously the discussion around rugby is key. Um, the city is busy dealing with that at the moment, um, and then you know using it as as part of our mix. You know we've got a convention centre that really is outperforming so many around the world, um, and how do that convention centre might be a catalyst. It links business tourism to this, this uh, region, but so do all the other components of it. So they might not be, uh, um, it, might, it, it might even link into that process. How does the stadium play part of what, what that offering is to, to business conferencing? How do we host more, more concerts? How do we get, uh, get more sporting teams in there? And how do we change the commercial model around the stadium, I think is key to making it sustainable. But, but, you know, obviously um, it is another driver in the economy and we, we don't have a choice. We've got to make it work.